Recreation Chiropractic in Eat and Pray. And the particular topic we're going to talk about tonight is you might even know, uh, be familiar with these people because they are actually from just down the street or just down this, uh, um, the town or city from us. And let's see if anybody can recognize these two girls. Anybody know who these two yeah, girls are? The yes, are they're conjoined twins? twins. Way back in the day, like 100 years ago, they called them Siamese twins. They were, but they were in Stillwater on Sunday in the shops. Okay, what? so they are from New Germany. And uh, yeah, they were on the cover of Life magazine. Um, they're basically essentially the same girl with two heads. Um, and the reason why I'm going to bring them up is because they to give us, they're kind of a walking, talking experiment. And they're going to, they literally have to get you thinking differently once you understand how they work and how they live. Brittany so, Brittany and Abby Hensel, okay, uh, are basically the same girl from the navel down, okay? So everything's the same to about the stomach or the, or the intestines, and then they start to transition. So for example, they've got three kidneys, and they've got four lungs, right? But, it, but they essentially become two different gals all the way up with two heads, but surrounded by one torso, okay? Now, here's how they're different. Among other things, one is outgoing and the other one is shy. So it's a personality thing as well, right? Uh, one likes math, the other English. One gets cold and the other's not. You ever been in a room where you just can't get warm mm -hmm. and you want to go keep checking the temperature and you think it's the room? It could be the room, but it's probably you, okay? Now, when this happens, when one is cold and the other's hot, and this is what's actually written on them, they will actually blanch and there's a line that goes right down the middle of them. So how is that possible in the same temperature of the same room? They have two different bodies detecting that temperature and then in response reacting to that temperature so that one side's body is constricting blood vessels and the other side is not. So one looks red and the other one gets blanched. So much so there's a demarcation line that runs right down the middle of them when it happens. Now here's, a, here's the real big one. One is often sick and the other is not. Now how is that possible? Right away, you're probably gonna feel a little weird in your seat. I had an RN in our office who actually said, oh my gosh, can you get me more information on that? Because she could not reconcile with what she knew. Because what do we assume when you're sick? That you got something, right, and the germ made you sick, right? Now it's, here's what's interesting. So, Abby and Brittany, very specifically, Abby sits at about a five degree angle, and Brittany sits at about a 15 degree angle, okay? The one thing they have different is two different spines. And two different spines means two different nervous systems, okay? Now, they have the same body, they have the same blood, but they're reacting to the exact same virus differently. So what do we assume then? If everybody in the family gets sick except for Ann, what do we always say? Well, everybody but got, but everybody got it but Ann. Boy, was she lucky. It's impossible. The reality is Ann probably got it too, but for whatever reason, her system's working well enough that she's processing it efficiently enough, she doesn't even have symptoms related to fighting it off. The reality is they all got it. Unless they live out in Timbuktu in the middle of Alaska, you're all getting everything. Everybody's getting everything. The illusion is that if we have symptoms, I got it, and then if somebody didn't have symptoms, they didn't get it, okay? It doesn't work that way. And these girls prove it. Now, Gray's Anatomy textbook has been known for some time, and it's been, and we, uh, you know, I always say it's specifically page four is Gray's Anatomy, and I don't even know if it's changed on the page in more than 100 years, but Gray's Anatomy says the nervous system controls and coordinates all organs and structures in the human body. Now, what part of all is all? Everything, there's nothing outside that. The nervous system controls and coordinates everything. It's controlling, controlling your experience right now. It's controlling you taking in this, this talk, okay? So, I happen to put a picture up of the nerves specifically coming off the spine and in particular from the neck going directly to the heart. 
look at that innervation go, look at that communication going on there, right? Now again, the nervous system controls everything in the body, but in this particular example, look how it just goes to that one organ alone. And that's happening with every organ in every organ system in the body, okay? And it's all being funneled through the spine, okay? Louis Pasteur, sound familiar? Pasteurization, right? Louis Pasteur, people don't know this, but later in life, Louis Pasteur said in French, because he was a Frenchman, the germ is nothing, the terrain is everything. In French, the specific language says it's the soil, not the seed. So what is the soil and the seed? The seed is the germ or the microbe. What is the soil? The body. The body the terrain. So what determines whether that seed quote unquote grows in that soil is the nature of the soil. And he was specifically talked about uh, the ready terrain. The ready terrain is the compromised body. And that's what allows that microbe to grow and maybe that body may not be able to handle it as well or as efficiently. And so that means using more symptoms and more strategies to keep that person alive. And then when they have sick symptoms, we call them sick. But if they are not ready to rain, and again, they're not in a vacuum, though that germ still is exposed to them, it's still coursing through their system. If they're working well enough, they're gonna work so efficiently they won't even know they have it. But again, what's the assumption? If I don't have symptoms, I haven't gotten it yet. Maybe I'll get it later, but I don't have it now. I haven't gotten it yet. How do we know? Right? So there's not a cold and flu season. Germs don't like cold and Christmas. Okay? We kind of pretend it does. I call it the perfect storm because what happens to the terrain during that time? First of all, vitamin D is a huge player in immune function and, and the way your body works. I wish more people would take it. But what happens is you store that in your body, and then when the summer season's like after today, starting tomorrow basically, right? It starts getting cold. Well, guess what? That vitamin, that vitamin D starts getting depleted, which means the immune system starts coming down. What holiday comes at the end of this month? Thanksgiving? No, Halloween. Yeah, the sugar holiday. <laughs> so now we've got low vitamin D, and now we've got sugar. And is there more or less stress during the holidays? More. Perfect storm. So now that ready terrain is set up shop, your tinder basically, come Christmas time. And then when you get sick, you go, well, it's cold and flu season. Contrast with that with July. People tend to be more relaxed, outgoing, outside, getting exercise, vitamin D from the sun, right? And so it looks like, you know, germs don't like the 4th of July but it's really all about the terrain. And they're just there to ad advantageously take advantage of the situation, just depending on how strong or weak that soil is, okay? I like to say in the office all the time, it takes two to tango. So do germs count? Do they matter? Yes. Sure, but it takes two to tango, and you're leading that dance. And what we've done in this society is we've flipped it backwards. So everybody's hiding in their basement, hoping they don't get something. And by the way, what are the odds that they're actually doing something to improve that terrain? Almost nil, because they're all down at liquor stores, because those weren't closed. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? So we've spent so much time avoiding our environment instead of going, how's my game? Okay? How's my diet? How's my exercise? How's my sleep? Am I drinking more water than junk? Or eating better foods than junk, right? Am I seeing a chiropractor? Okay? People don't know that chiropractic isn't about pain relief any more than exercise is about weight. It's about your system working better. And if the nervous system controls and coordinates everything, what else is it controlling and coordinating? Immune system. Really cool studies coming out showing that, that when you get adjusted regularly, your immune system pops up. You tend to have less issues. And without treating any cold or flu, guess what you tend to do better, season or not? You tend to do better when you're seeing a chiropractor and keeping your nerve channels open. Now, you guys remember these guys, right? Yeah. And I like the idea that, the, that, you know, Arnie, he's straight, that's like a straight spine versus a crooked spine. Remember, Brittany was sitting at a 15 degree angle. 
We don't necessarily know if she's going to be more compromised. We don't know her experience. But what are the odds of a spine sitting at 15 degrees angle versus five, just five? You probably put money in that one's probably going to tend to have more issues and more stress on that spine, a building that's more crooked, right? Now, I like to say, do you know the sick twin? So what is a sick twin? Someone who's sick when nobody else is. Somebody who's sick when it's not even the season. You know, some people are sick all the time, right? And they're still blaming the bug. And yet, everybody around them is fine, right? Uh, or that when they do get sick, and let's say everybody's kind of sick during that time, they just tend to get sicker, harder. They're the one that miss, misses work. They're sicker longer, right? That's the person that's more compromised. As I like to say, the germ isn't trying harder in them. How can you have a, mic a microbe, much less the latest thing going on, where some people don't even know they had it, and other people really struggled with it? And I think the real intellectual dishonesty is blaming the virus, because at that point you want to go, why was that person so compromised? Okay? And if somebody does get sick and then recovers, which we hope, they better be changing their game. They better be doing more things to improve their function. Otherwise, just the next microbe down the road is going to have the same thing, and they're going to have the same misrelationship with that microbe, and they're still not healthier. Okay? And the last thing I would say is, are you the sick twin? Do you want an internal inventory? How's, how's your game? right? And so when you start to reconcile this, how can one twin be sick and the other one not, and they share the same blood supply, they're sharing virtually every red blood cell in their body, and people are afraid to touch the door handle, much less save somebody's hand. Isn't that interesting? Now, what are you going to do with that information differently? What might you do differently? How do you not tell somebody about that relationship? So for all the things people hear about these twins, and this kind of a novelty, you know, you got two people living in the same body. But as a chiropractor, the big takeaway for me is, again, how could one person be sick and one person be healthy in that same body and still live the way we do in our relationship that we have with germs? Well, are you implying that sickness is all in the mind? Is that what you're Not in the mind, in the body, and in particular the nervous system that detects that. So your nervous system detects everything going on in your environment and processes it through your body. So it's not just mind, because mind is thought processes and different other things. But that nervous system controls, coordinates everything in your body. If we say just mind, for example, how do you, all your organs and your liver and your kidneys and everything know what to do without the mind knowing it? So there's a lot more going on than just the mind. Good question. Thank God, right? So tell me what your liver should be doing right now, right? Yeah. Okay, otherwise, any other questions? Thanks for your time.